Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. As you're finding Luke's Gospel, if you're turning there, it'll be on the screen too. So I just want to take a moment and thank everybody. Um, that I put something in the bulletin. But I want to thank everybody that participated in our benevolent projects this past week, or this past few weeks. I have our last box right here that's got to be turned in, and this is box number 50. Number 50. Yes, you can be thankful for that. Yes, absolutely. For the first time ever, we participated in Operation Christmas Child. It was kind of a last-minute decision. And uh, this week, uh, Ethan and Steve and myself came in here and made sure we went through every box, made sure it was ready to go, and then we delivered them, and one came in late, and so we're going to make sure it gets delivered. But uh, 50 boxes we turned in with all the money to have them ship, and... Uh, it was, it was so great to be able to drop those off at the drop-off location and know that we were sending boxes around the world to make an impact uh, for the gospel and for the children that will be receiving these. Amen. And uh, Steve and I got to look at some of the material and the, uh, some of the programs that they use to minister to the kids that receive a box. And every box, they don't just get gifts. They don't just uh, get you know, the necessities that you give them and toys. But they get a, a booklet that explains the gospel in their language, and, and they get the opportunity to sign up for discipleship classes to learn more about Christ and to get to know Him. And that is amazing. That is just an awesome ministry. So thank you for participating in, uh, in Operation Christmas Child. Then yesterday, yesterday some of us came together, and we gave out pies. We called it Neighbor Day. And we got out in our community, and I uh, felt like God was calling us to do this. And yesterday we gave out 70 pumpkin pies in our neighborhoods around us. And uh, it took us a couple hours to go around, and we gave about 50 out on, uh, door to door. And, uh, and then we got crunched for time and had to wrap up. So we went through, we rode through the Walmart parking, parking lot in the church bus <laughs> and sabotaged people. And, uh, and they were, you speak, you talk about thankful. They were, we had people offering to pay for them. And people looking at us and saying, these are free? And we're like, oh, yeah, we just want to say happy Thanksgiving. We hope you have a wonderful holiday. And uh, we handed them this along with a, a card that uh, listed our church, our service times and our address and that sort of thing. But um, it has a sticker on there that said, thankful for neighbors like you in our name, church name and address. This one here actually says, thankful for family like you. And that's because everybody here today is getting a pumpkin pie when you leave. Yes. So, uh, oh, I know you're excited. Yes. So we are thankful for neighbors like them, and we're thankful for family like you. So um, Kurt and Casey don't know it, but they will be handing out pumpkin pies as you, because they did such a great job yesterday. So uh, I've got a few more for you to hand out. So uh, everybody that's in here today um, will get, we should have enough for everybody to take one with you. You say, hey, I don't need two pies at my house. Well, then give one away to somebody. And we had several people yesterday that said, hey, I don't eat sugar, or I'm allergic to pumpkin. And, uh, and many of them just took them anyway and said, hey, I'll give it to somebody else. And we were like, hey, absolutely. You go bless somebody else. So everybody's getting blessed with a pie today. If you don't want it, take it anyway, because we don't want to keep them, okay? <laughs> uh, if they're here, I'll just eat them all week, and, and, and that doesn't need to happen. So, uh, so thank you all so much for, for participating and, uh, and making that happen. And I want to thank Walmart, too. Walmart, I met with their managers. They gave us a discount on these pies and, and uh, because it was a, a benevolence project that we were doing. So, so shop local, shop Walmart, I guess. Um, but uh, they didn't ask me to do that. But I, appreciated, I appreciated their management help stepping up and saying, you know what, we want to help with this. And so, uh, so we, we may have taken some business from them by handing out pies in their parking lot. But it's, it's all good. It's all good. We're in the week three of a series. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, we typically um, work in series format in our, in our sermons. And so right now we're in the middle of a series, uh, the third week into it, and it's called November, as you see on the screen, with an emphasis on no. In week one, we, many of us shared our love for this time of year and for the month of November. We talked about why it means so much to us, whether it's whether it's Veterans Day that we celebrated last Sunday or Thanksgiving that we'll celebrate this week. Maybe it's the fall colors that you just love or the cooler weather that we've been experiencing this week. Then you might be me. 
And you might be so excited about taking part in No Shave November. And I haven't shaved now in about three weeks. And uh, I'm going strong. I've passed the wall uh, of distress. And so uh, it's gotten easier. And for the first time in my life, I've grown somewhat of a beard, I guess. And uh, many of the men in our church, most of the men in our church have facial hair, I think. Except Brother Tom out there, you know, that military guy. He's going to keep it slick. But, um, but when, I, when I announced that I was going to be participating in No Shave November, the male contingency uh, really appreciated my, my effort. So, uh, But throughout the month of November, we're focusing on two, two letters in this, in, this, in this name or in this, uh, the month of November. And the, the letters are N and O, focusing on no. And the first week we talked about no big deal. Things in our culture, in our society, even within our church, that we just brush aside, we look the other way, and we say, you know what, it's no big deal. Or it's not big enough a deal for me to make a deal out of because it's really not my deal to deal with. And we have those things in our society, we have those things in our church. Things that do not align with God's word, even. Things that we know to be true and righteous and holy. And things that we know to be sinful and against God's teachings. And yet we just look the other way because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want to call it what it is and say what it is because we just want to be liked. And I talked about that. I, I want to be liked. I want you to like me. And you probably feel the same way about others in your life. You want to be liked. And you don't want to say anything or confront anybody and Put, and, and, and share any of Jesus' teachings that's going to put them in a, in, a, in, a, in a bad situation, put you in a bad situation. And so sometimes we just look the other way. But we as a church have been challenged. We've been challenged and we have to represent Christ in these terrible last days. And we can't look the other way and just say it's no big deal. Right, amen. We show love and we speak love. But if we're eager to connect people with the genuine love and grace of Christ, we have to be willing to convey the truth of transformation through his grace. Yeah. And we have to do it in love. Yeah. It's not always fun, but sometimes you just got to share and call it like you see it. And say, you know what? I've read God's word and this is not what, it's, what it says we should be doing. But we have to stand up for what is right. Last week we continued with no respect. Moses showed his respect for God when he encountered the burning bush, taking off his shoes, standing there in awe of uh, the admiration that he had for God's presence. Showing God the respect that he deserves is about hearing the call of God as Moses did, responding and answering to that call as Moses did. As he said, here I am, and recognizing who God really is. Fearfully seeing God in all his glory. When Moses finally realized that it was God that was in the bush, his whole demeanor changed. His whole attitude changed. When he realized he wasn't just looking at some amazing burning bush that was not being consumed. And I challenge you, and I challenge you even today, that we are to respect God because God expects and demands respect for us to fear him. And I can tell you that the closer we get to God, the more we see of him, the more we will come to worship and respect him. Yes, and that's exactly what happened to Moses. When Moses realized that he had his eyes on the presence of God, he came to respect him even more. And so today we're continuing our focus on November, and we're looking at the phrase, no thank you. This week of thanksgiving, this season of gratitude, and today's sermon is no thank you. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable, this story. Verse 10, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. Here's his prayer. God, I thank you. I thank you that I am not like other people. Robbers, 
evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Verse 13, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. May God add his blessing to his word this morning. I've shared this many times before. I probably do it every year, in fact. Some of you maybe weren't here last year when I did, so I'll share it again. I love this time of year. I absolutely love it. I love the holidays. I love the idea of getting together with family and, and seeing people. I love getting to connect with that weird uncle I hadn't seen in a year. Don't look at me like that. You all got one. <laughs> Philip, you're not that weird uncle to your... Okay, I'm just making sure. Just making sure. But I love this time of year. And I especially love it because it gives me an extra sense of gratitude. I try to be a guy that's thankful for what God has done for me. I try to remember those things. But this time of year, it just really sets in with me as we talk about Thanksgiving. We celebrate Thanksgiving. And this week, we'll all gather with our families, hopefully, and, and just have that sense of fullness and love and belonging. And I hope you get to take part in that. Today, I just want to express to you that I'm thankful for a few things in particular. I'm thankful that God sent his son to die for me and redeem me of my sins. Amen. More than anything. Amen. As Mitzi said in, during worship, if we don't get, if he doesn't do anything else for us, Linda, he's done enough yeah. by sending his son to die that we might be saved. Yeah. I'm thankful for my family, my beautiful family that God's given me, that my wife gave me. <laughs> I'm thankful for my church, and I'm thankful for the power of God that lives inside of me. God has allowed me, a sinner, a lost son, to be able to walk around with his power inside of me. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. So here's my question to you. Today's going to be much different than what we normally do. What are you thankful for? I want, somebody, I want some of you to take 10, 15 seconds, and I just want you to to say to the congregation, to, to your brothers and sisters, what are, it can be one thing, it can be ten things, as long as you can say it in ten seconds. <laughs> but what are some things you are thankful for this morning? Go. I'm thankful for my kids. I'm thankful for my kids when they turned out well and Amen. they're good dogs now. Amen. Amen. Family. Thankful for family. Amen. Thankful for family and the answers to prayer. Our church. Amen. Yes. Amen. Our church. Yes. Our church. Yes. What else are you thankful for? I'm thankful for a close friends. Friend. Close knit family and a, and a Christian husband. Absolutely. Keep going. <laughs> yes, Miss well, Bobby. Our new friends. Our friends. For our church. For our church. Well, thank you. We're thankful to be here. Thankful to be here. What else? What are you thankful for? For health. For health. That's a good one. Thankful for health. Because many of our people are not healthy and are not here today. We've got several that are either out of town or, or just not feeling. We had to cancel Sunday school this morning because of sickness. And so we're thankful for health this morning. And for a God that heals. I'm thankful for a God that heals this morning. What else? Well, for security, but not, not financially. Sure. Not security for your yeah. Your security and knowing where we're going. Right. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. We have a hope, right? Yes. We have that promise in Him. What else are you thankful for? Good neighbors. Good neighbors. Oh, there you go. There you go. If mine were here this morning, I would say that, but they're not here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm thankful for you. We have great neighbors. Y'all have heard of me talking about our neighbors. We have amazing neighbors. That we live in the USA. That we live in the USA, a free country. 
Aren't you thankful for freedom? We talked about that last week. What else are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my wife and my children, church, Amen. and all the people that I've known growing up. And most of them here are related to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and also thankful. You're thankful for reproduction, right? Yeah. <laughs> thankful for my pastor. Amen. And I'm thankful for surgery. Amen. That's a good one. Amen. God uses people, right? He uses people to take care of us. What else are you thinking for? Jelly, you were about to say something. I saw you. <laughs> job security. Thankful what else? For job, Thankful for a job. I was waiting for somebody to say that one. That's a good one. Amen. That God's called us to certain places to make an impact and to help support ourselves. What else are you thankful for? Thankful for a church. Amen. <clears throat> thankful for your church. Amen. And the people. What else? Give me a couple more. Freedom. Pumpkin pies. <laughs> pumpkin pies. Thank the Lord for pumpkin pies. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you said that. That was perfect. That goes right into my sermon. <laughs> That's a perfect segue. God has blessed us so much, and we have so, so much to be thankful for. We've shared what we're thankful for, but how many of us know that being thankful is more than words? Yes. Being thankful is an attitude that we choose or don't choose to take on. We can choose whether or not we want to have an attitude to have participate in this season of gratitude. It's one thing to say what you're thankful for. It's another thing to mean it. It's another thing to have a sincere heart when you do so. And sometimes thank you can be taken out of context. Or perhaps it's used in a less sincere way. As in Jeff's thank you for pumpkin pie. <laughs> it was perfect. But sometimes we do. We, the telemarketer calls and you says, you say to them, thanks but no thanks. In other words, you're saying, uh, yes but no. Not today. Or sometimes maybe somebody puts you in a bad spot and you sarcastically say, oh, well, thanks a lot. We say it. We all say it. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate you putting me in that spot. You really shouldn't have. Or maybe it's when someone is feeling relieved. Maybe they have a sense of relief in their life and they just say, oh, thank God. <coughs> Is that sincere? Is it an attitude of thankfulness or is it just words? Thank God, that's a word. Probably how y'all felt when you handed out the last pie yesterday. You know? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> totally kidding because Jeff made the comment, I wish we had 50 more to pass out. And I completely agree with that statement. <clears throat> I was playing Uno with Charlie this week. But he loves to, our kids love to play games, board games, cards, whatever. He was wanting to play some board game that usually takes about 45 minutes, and I wasn't committed to it. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll meet you in a minute, we'll play Uno. And he's like, okay. He loves to play, he's good at it. And I'm sitting there, and I've got one card left. Uno, baby. <laughs> I got my one card, and I yell Uno, and he's sitting over there with a peacock of cards, as we like to call it. And he's in trouble. And about that time, he throws down a draw four. And I went, no! And he goes, thank you, Lord! <laughs> and he had no idea he was helping me preach this morning. <laughs> but sometimes we give less sincere thank yous. It was a thank you for the power. It was a thank you, Lord. Or it was a thanks a lot. And you probably say, well, I, you know, that's not me, Pastor. I don't do that. Well, yes, we do. Even the religious people, even the ones who are close to the Lord and walk in relationship with Him, sometimes we find ourselves giving meaningless thanks. We just do it. It's just words. It's just what we do. And in our text today, Jesus finds Himself in a teaching moment here. And He decides to tell a story, to share a parable with this audience, this audience of privileged people that he's talking to. The Bible says that 
He was talking to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. This is his congregation today. He was talking to a congregation of people who were confident in themselves and felt privileged and that they were better than the rest. And so he begins to give this story of this Pharisee and a tax collector. And he talks about this Pharisee, this religious person, standing there with this fancy robe on, his religious robe, and he's walking to the temple to go pray to God the Father. And in verse 11 he says, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. Listen to this prayer again. God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Here this Pharisee is offering a prayer to the Most High God, and it's all about him. He's talking, he knows who's he, who he's praying to. He's a religious man, of, in fact. And all he can say in his prayer is, I'm glad I'm not like them. Thank God I'm not like other men. Thank God I am somebody. Thank God I'm not a sinner like the rest of them. And, and I especially thank God that I'm not like that tax collector over there. Even calling out his neighbor in the temple of God and saying, I'm thankful I'm not like him. There he stands before God giving thanks and then he carries on and says, oh no, I'm not like them. You know why? You know why I'm not like them? Brother Donna had nothing to do with God and what God had done in his life. It was the fact that he fasted twice a week and paid his tithe. That's what separates me from that tax collector and those adulterers and those robbers and those sinners. That's what separates me from them. And that's why I'm thankful, because I could be like them. But no, I'm a tithe-giving, fasting-believing man of God. That's what makes me different. Here this Pharisee is, feeling good about himself. Making all these statements, these intimate thanks of gratitude. <laughs> and let me tell you something. At this point in the message and at this point in the service... We have to be careful that we're not sitting here saying, I'm glad I'm not like that Pharisee. It's very easy to fall in that same pit and say, thank God I'm not like that Pharisee that he's reading about. Thank God that's not me that he, that pastor's talking about. Thank God I'm not like one of the religious folk in, in the church. Thank God I don't make it about me. Thank God I know that I didn't get here with just the help of God, but by some of my own doing. Thanks is more than words. Thanks is a lot more than words. Thanks is an attitude. This season of thanksgiving we've got to be thankful more than with just words Amen. moments ago you expressed your thanks for all that God has given you a job a church a pastor, friends, family health, medicine surgeons freedom, security all these things that God's given us. And I believe it was, it, was, it was with a sincere heart. But I have to tell you, we have to be careful. And I know we can joke and be thankful for pumpkin pie and for having a draw for it the perfect time in the Uno game. But when it comes time to, to, to share our thankfulness because God has done something on our behalf, 
we have to be sure that we're doing it with a spirit of humility and not a spirit of pride or that it was something that we could have done on our own. Here's the tax collector standing off at a distance, the Bible tells us, all by himself. Why? Because it wasn't about him. I imagine them walking into the temple in this story. And that Pharisee just standing right there in front of everybody, giving his prayer and his thanks. And yet the Bible says that the little tax collector stands over to the side at a distance, holds his head down, beats his chest and says, God, I'm a sinner. I need your mercy this morning. That is a spirit of humility. That is an attitude of humility. And in this Thanksgiving season, I hope that you and I and all of us can have that attitude this week. There's nothing wrong with testifying and sharing God's goodness. We just did that together as a family. But at the end of the day, it's about you and God getting together in your time where nobody's looking over at the side and saying, God, God, I'm thankful that you saved me. That's the attitude I want. I don't want to just be thankful this week. I want to be thankful next week and the next week and the next week and the next week because God didn't have to save my soul. He didn't have to send his son, Amanda. He didn't have to give me freedom. He didn't have to give me a place to call home in a church family. And he sure enough didn't have to take this old lousy body and put his power inside of me so that I could then work for him and do his kingdom ministry. So I hope you have an attitude of thankfulness. An attitude of thankfulness with humility this morning. Everybody standing if you would. We're going to dismiss with prayer, and I want to do it a little bit differently. I really want you to, I want you to take time to pray here. Don't just let me pray our dismissal. I want you to be thankful this morning. I want you to stop, and I just want you to say, God, help me have an attitude with humility of thanksgiving this week and the days ahead. Let me be like that tax collector where it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with what my neighbor's done for me or my family's done for me or even what my pastor and church have done for me because I know that all that stuff stems from you. That's what the tax collector knew. Think about this now. The tax collector was seen as the chief of all sinners. Nobody liked the tax collector. And yet he's the one in the story with the humble heart that understood that all things come from the Father. Let's pray together as we dismiss. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time of worship this morning together. Thank you for your word, God, that you spoke in and through me, dear God. God, it's nothing I did, but God, it was your power and your spirit, dear God, speaking to your people this morning, God, as we unpack your word and the stories of your son today. God, I ask you right now, God, to give us all a spirit of thanksgiving with the right attitude, dear Father, an attitude of humility. We are thankful today, God, for so many things. We don't deserve anything that we have that you blessed us with. And so today we stand here with a, hum a, a humble spirit saying thank you. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us individually, for us as families for us as a church, and for us as the body of Christ. God, may we walk out of here today, God, with that humble spirit, that humble attitude, and go out into our lives this week, dear God, and in a special way, share the goodness of God with others with an attitude of humility. Reminding others that this is all possible because of Him. God, I thank you for each one that's here today. God, for the so many who are out of town this week and traveling. 
and those that are sick in their body and could not be here, God, you know their names, their faces. You see them right now. We ask you to be with them in a special way today, God. And be with us as we go from this place, God, as we travel this week or as we spend time with family this week. Wherever our goings and our comings take us, may you, God, protect us, keep us safe. And may, God, you give us more things, God, to be thankful for this week. God, we love you. We honor you this day. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. I'm thankful for you all. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful week. Jesus loves you so much more. Happy, happy Thanksgiving to you. Don't forget your pie on the way out. If you do forget, I will eat it for you. Love you all. <laughs>